Our scripture this morning is from Ephesians starting 4, starting at verse 25 through 5, 2. <clears throat> Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to his neighbor, for we all are members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you're still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. He who, he who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with his own hands, that he may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what it is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with other form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly loved children, and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us in fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Here endeth the reading of God, holy word. So in our scripture for today, we find Paul writing to the church in Ephesus. And the reason Paul was writing this portion of the letter was there were some issues that had begun to arise among the members of the church. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, I just can't believe that that could ever happen. Are we all not part of the family of God? Surely we must agree on all things at all times. But if you think about it from this standpoint, then sh it sure would be wonderful, right? That if we all agreed all the time. However, just like with your regular family, I'm going to guess that that's not the case. You see, we often find that the people that we love the most, be it our regular family or our church family, are also the ones that can hurt us the most. So that is part of what is happening in the church at Ephesus. So in writing this portion of the letter, Paul is giving them, and us as well, practical ideas on how to deal with issues when they arise. Paul gives us direction on what we should be doing as a church and as Christians. Now some of these things, when you hear them read, they, they kind of seem like no-brainers to us, right? But you have to remember that Paul is writing this letter to people that were new to Christianity because... Christianity was new. So indeed, he was writing to people that have been part of other faith traditions and people that have been part of no faith traditions. And some of the things that he talks about not doing, don't steal, don't lie, don't cheat one another. These are things that were encouraged by the world around them. So I think it'd be easier for us to think about it in this way. Think about it as if he's writing to new Christians today. Ones that have been part of the world, but have never been part of the family of God. So they have been told, and we find this in the world today, things like this. You know, you should get angry at people whenever they do you wrong. It's okay if you can tell a lie to other people, as long as you don't get caught. Stealing is fine. If people don't protect what they have, then they don't deserve it in the first place. Or if I'm stealing from some big company, well, who cares? They have plenty of things anyways. Of course you're bitter and angry about the way life is treating you. Why wouldn't you be? Look around at all the things that have happened to you. Surely my, you being bitter is justified. And you're right to talk about that person behind their back. Look at what they did to you. Now, these are all things that the world will tell you it's okay for you to be doing. But there is an interesting part in this scripture as well 
that we might see things differently. Paul directs us in this scripture, and, and from the translation that I worked from this week, it says, to be angry, but do not sin. So be angry, but do not sin. So for Christians, the question of this anger can be difficult. For those that do not have faith, anger is often seen as the correct response when something does something someone does something that we do not like. Now, I don't know about all of you, but it is hard for me to be angry and then not to sin. Indeed, the idea itself sounds like a contradiction. How are we as Christians supposed to be angry and not sin? Isn't anger itself a sin? Doesn't that go against what Jesus tells us? Well, yes, it does. Jesus wants us to live our lives in ways that allow us to forgive others. And ultimately, Paul does talk about that in the end as well. Forgive one another. But Jesus tells us that when we are struck, instead of striking back at that person, we are to turn the other cheek to them as well. So where does that leave this teaching of Paul? Saying that to be angry is fine, but don't sin when you're angry, and don't allow the devil an opportunity to cause you to sin when you're angry. Is Paul saying that it's okay for us to be angry? Well, perhaps this particular translation that I studied from doesn't really capture or read it the best. The one that uh, Ronnie read from this morning probably is better. It says, do not let your anger cause you to sin. Doesn't that make more sense? Don't let your anger cause you to sin. See, Paul knows that he is writing to other humans. He knows that we have frailties, probably better than any other writer in the New Testament. Paul understands that we have frail, frailties and that we are capable, capable of great anger. What he wants from us is to not allow ourselves to act out when we are angry so that we don't do something that we are going to regret or something that brings shame to the Lord. You see, we are imperfect beings. We all have times when we are angry. However, we are to try and do our best to turn that other cheek instead of acting out in anger and causing ourselves to often make the situation worse. Now, I wanna tell you a story, and you may or not be surprised by this, but I have a temper. Now, it's not what it used to be, <laughs> and I thank God for that. But there have been times in my life where I have allowed my anger to cause me to sin. One such occurrence happened during a soccer game. And though I was not uh, a pastor at the time, I was a Christian. And I was old enough to know better than to allow all of this to happen. See, our team had a corner kick. And on that corner kick, I bumped into the opposing team's goalie. Now, if you've ever watched soccer or played soccer, you know that it's pretty much a no-no to touch the other team's goalie. They don't like it very much. Things go poorly afterwards. Now, I can tell you that I didn't hit him very hard, and I can say that it was not on purpose. It was an accident. I was making a run towards the ball, and he actually stepped into my path when I ran into him. And I did turn to him immediately and say, hey, sorry about that, buddy. Didn't mean to hit you there. However, he was less than pleased that I had run into him. And he proceeded to yell at me using the most colorful language that you can imagine. I walked away from him and I decided that I would take myself out of the game so that I could cool down and so could he. Unfortunately, our bench was on the same side of the field that that goalie was on and he was able to keep yelling at me from the goal as I was sitting on the bench. I did my best to ignore him. However, I could feel myself getting more and more angry. I could feel it building up inside of me and I'm sure that my face was about as red as my shirt. And after about five minutes of him continually yelling at me, I finally looked at him and said, well, buddy, if you want it, you got it. I'll see you after the game out in the parking lot. Now, that is not something that I'm very proud of doing. And I did manage to calm myself down and go back into the game and there was nothing else that happened between us during the game. However, it was apparent to both of us 
that we were both keeping an eye on the clock to wait for the game to end. And so we did. And at the final horn, as it sounded, I went right up to that goalie and I said, I apologize. That was out of line. I got a little too heated and I hope that you can accept my apology. Now I wasn't sure if he was gonna punch me right in the face or if he was gonna cuss me out again, but he looked at me and he offered his hand and he said, yeah, me too. I was out of line with what I was saying to you and we shook hands and we've actually played games against each other since without any incident. And you might be thinking to yourself, man, I thought I was gonna hear a story about the pastor getting in a fist fight in the parking lot. <laughs> Or you might be thinking, well, you know, that really isn't all that bad. You got angry, but you didn't allow it to cause you to go any further. But the truth is that I did allow my anger to cause me to sin there. Even worse, I allowed my anger to make me forget what God has called me to do and to be. You see, even if I were to try and witness to that person now, how would they ever be willing to listen to me? How would any of my teammates that sat on there on the bench and heard me call this man out to potentially fight with one another ever listen to me when I tried to witness to them about peace and forgiveness? So we can see how allowing ourselves to act upon our anger can be damaging, not just to our own souls, but to others as well. We have to do our best to make sure that we do not allow ourselves to sin when we are angry. There's a great little quote that's out there and it goes something like this. On your hard days, you might not be able to be the reason that someone sees Jesus. But don't let it be on those hard days the reason that someone turns away from Jesus. So finally, Paul closes in his writing. He reminds us to be imitators of God as his beloved children, reminding us all that we are part of the family of God. And we are called, therefore, to behave in ways that show others the love of God. So if we do this, brothers and sisters, we can rest assured that we will not fall into any of those mistakes that Paul warns us about. My challenge for you this week is this. Is there something in your life that is causing you anger? And in that anger, are you allowing yourself to sin? And if so, what do you need to do to let go of that anger in your life so that you can live the way that God has called you to live?